Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where we talk about TV shows of the supernatural, fantasy, and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the series premiere of Mecha Ood Mechanical Arms. Going forward, I'll probably just refer to it as Mechanical Arms, but I'll probably title it as Mecha Ood uh, colon Mechanical Arms. That's kind of a me thing. Uh, Great series from here. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode. So let's break it down. First and foremost, I don't know if I talked about this in any other capacity, but immediately, like, this series kind of gives me different vibes from other series. Like, the first thing that came to my mind is, like, I think, I don't know if it's, like, some of the character designs or it's aesthetic or what. It kind of gives me Katekyo Hitman Reborn vibes. I don't know if that's just, like, just tonally speaking or just vibe-wise or even character design-wise. But something that kind of struck me partway through the episode was, like, it also gives me Tokyo Xanadu vibes. And I wonder if that's a byproduct of, like, the mechanical arms kind of reminds me of some of the soul devices from Tokyo Xanadu. So maybe that's, like, the correlation I'm thinking of, too. Um, so I thought that was fascinating, but also the arms element of it all, calling them arms, like my brain immediately goes to wild arms. So I just, that, there's, like I said, my brain is pulling in so many different like references in conjunction with this, but yeah, you kind of get thrown in the middle of all this. I thought it was kind of interesting how we start off like, right, we start off with Hikaru, but like he's immediately just watching stuff from a very far distance, go off, go down in, in the distance where Aki is trying to steal something. And I guess she did not go about it the most subtle way. Does not seem like Aki, just from what we got introduced of her characters episode, seems like she's very like, I'm a, I am, I'm very like headstrong and I will, she definitely seems like the brute force type of person. So she's just like, why get all stealthy? I'm just going to steal this device and punch my way out if need be. She, um, there was this interesting situation where the guy she was fighting summoned his arms. And it's like, she was like, how could you treat? I know. I can't remember. If it, no, it was, it was one of her, her, one of her, um, her arms is like, oh, how dare you treat him like that? Cause I guess, cause he has a chain on him. So it's kind of like, I don't know if it's a thing of, oh, we kind of strip you of your free will because they are sentient beings. So, which I also think is interesting. I wasn't expecting hers to be two separate things. It's like each one, like each side, like it's not one arm. It's two separate arms, like hers, which I thought was interesting. But like the guy who had the sword and everything that was fighting Aki at the beginning, his didn't talk. So I, I guess they kind of stripped them of like their sentience and just because he did like at first have a chain and I didn't know if that was part of the transformation, but they did comment on like, how dare you do that to one of our kind. So because their perspective was like they aren't on equal footing their tools and they should be used as such is kind of his perspective on it. And so they duke it out, which I love the whole fast paced sequence of that all. But um like I said, you kind of get thrown in the middle of everything. You don't know what's going on. Like, we just know she's after one specific thing, which that thing ends up being Alma, which, as we learned later on, but he gets knocked into the sky. He gets summoned, but he lands somewhere in the city. Uh, what I thought was really interesting is the next day, Hikaru tried to show his friends the video, but when he scrubs through the video, like, when you let the video play, none of what he saw registered. So I was like, how the hell did that happen? I was like, oh, like, I wonder, like... It's like, because I was like, well, I wonder can anything related to the arms not be captured on, like, is that some, because like, it seems like a, the major company that's involved in all of this is, what was it, its name again? Um, was it like Kagami or something like that? I'm butchering it. I'm so sorry. Um, Katagami? It, it, it's something like that. It seems like it might be like the main central potential antagonist of this series, um, it seems like almost like this large score, like, because they've got, like, drones around delivering packages. So they're, like, this mega corporation, kind of like an Amazon or something like that. But I wonder, do they have, like, are they, like, invested and connected with everything, like, cell phones and stuff like that? So, like, they own a lot of technology. So maybe they're able to create this blind spot so nothing, like, mechanical arms related or mecha related can be viewed on. Like, because how, how would you do that? Like... I guess you just like send out something that immediately scrubs all footage because it just looks like regular footage. So either it's just something that naturally cannot be caught on camera or it was captured and it's just deleted. Who knows? But I thought it was interesting because nothing of it, like the light exploding at the building or the thing falling, none of that registered on Carter's phone. So I thought that was, I thought that was such a fascinating little detail. 
speaking of Hikaru, we get this little interesting character element to him that seems to play out throughout the episode, and I'm curious to get more insight into it. It seems like he's not the type of character who likes to kind of step forward, as that kind of ends up being this repeating message in the episode of step forward. It's just like, I think it doesn't come natural to him. He gets a little nervous, because like some students nearby were talking about, like, oh, I can't believe this person. He should stand out front if he's, like, I, I thought it was something related to Hikaru. Like, oh, this person is trying to sell some stuff. They should be selling it. Like, they're trying to do it at the station. I thought it was in correlation with Hikaru, but it doesn't seem like that's the case. It's just, I guess he gets nervous, because he's like, oh, sh should I do the right thing? It's like, oh, here's just pregnant should I sit, let her sit here, yada, 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 and he kind of hesitates, and the moment he gets up, his friends call out to him at the same time, the guy that was sleeping next to him sees a lady, and he's like, oh, I'm sorry, and like offers her a seat, so it's just kind of like, he's like, I gotta immediately get off the train, I don't know what that's necessarily trying to convey, where it's just like, he's, he has a hard time, like, he... I don't, I don't know if it's like a thing if he overthinks things. He gets so caught up in his head of like, oh, I should do this. But getting himself to actually do it seems to be hard. And maybe there's some deeper element or trauma associated with him not being able to just kind of like, it seems like following through seems to be his biggest issue. But I, I'm curious what kind of, I don't know. Like, that's why I'm like, I don't know if I'm misconveying like that whole scene or that whole element, like what that's trying to tell you about Hikaru. So... Either way, it seems like he's still healing. At the time, he was hearing Alma's voice, almost like reaching out to him saying, help me. I am curious why he out of anyone was able to hear Alma. Like, no one else did. Why uh, did Alma specifically choose him? But granted, like, the distance between them was so great. So it's like, maybe it's like he was already chosen beforehand and just... I mean, maybe Alma and him were meant to be. It was a destiny thing of, like, maybe Alma was seeking him out. And it just, you know, I'm, I'm curious if there's some kind of synchronization thing of like, there's always going to be one person you're meant to fully bond with. I, I, I don't know. Um, but Hikaru eventually tracks down like the device and touches it and almost, well, shoots in the air as the cube and falls down into his uh, hoodie pocket. I mean, the hoodie of his jacket. And now that's where Oma is stuck. So now, because it adds context to Aki, she has this like red tattoo and that on her leg, and that's where her arms come out from. The question is like, does she have one on the other side too, or do they both get summoned from that one spot? You'd assume there'd be one on both sides, but I wonder how do you dictate where the mark lands? Maybe you can choose where it lands, and obviously in Hokaru's case, it's like, oh, I just incidentally because i didn't know what was going on basically i had mine set up in the hood of my jacket so i have to always keep this jacket on i always had to keep it with me so i was like that's kind of an interesting framing device for that that it's like oh it's always going to be through the lens of i have to bring this jacket with me to activate this power like this is the only way i can kind of keep it for one hidden but also well also seems interesting too because it doesn't seem like he fully deactivates whereas like Aki's can deactivate it doesn't seem like Alma can so I don't know if it's like a kind of like a Pikachu thing of like Pikachu never gets inside of a Pokeball when it comes to Ash or whether it's just a thing of like maybe he can deactivate but he activates on his own I don't know because he doesn't know enough uh, Hikaru doesn't know enough to really be able to do that willingly so who who knows I don't think we're dealing with like a uh, a bleach situation of like yeah your your Zombato in its sealed state or its release state or its Bonkai form like you know so I think it's just maybe Alma's always going to be activated and I'm wondering if there's any disadvantage to that I mean obviously like conspicuous wise it's going to make you stand out but I wonder is there any disadvantage to always having your arms out like you know and Aki's case only she pulled her down but she like put hers away so she could slip through an alleyway which we find out seems like one of her characteristics is I don't know if she's going to be as bad as Zoro from One Piece but it seems like she's terrible with directions it's like no I told you to go south it's like you should have told me left or right it's like fine go back go all right go to your right there you have to be on the other side of those buildings so go back she's like you know what there's an alley here I'll go through it's like no no there's no alley there so and even her arms are like, oh, do you want to just, like, the punch through or something like that? She's like, no, I'll just slip through on my own. Because what I was wondering is, like, could there be a thing of, like, maybe... that? Because it did seem like later on... I mean, he is lugging around a gigantic mechanical thing. I, I know they're aliens. 
Uh, but the, that first episode doesn't cover that, but I saw somewhere that that's what they are. They're aliens. Uh, the mechanical arms or the mecha oods. Um What I thought was, it like, the, the point I was making was, like, I'm wondering, do you, like, have a natural, like, okay, like, having them activate it burn some, like, mana or, like, chakra or some kind of energy inside of you gets burned the more, longer they're active. Because, like, Hikaru did get tired earlier, but what I was trying to say before is, well, he is lugging around a gigantic mechanical arm, and it seems like he has good enough stamina, because, like, you know, almost like, oh my god, you're actually really good at running, but it's like, you know, you're running with a gigantic, potentially heavy metal. I mean, granted, it's in the back of his hood, and it's like, well, shouldn't that be, you know, why get caught up in, like, the real physics of that? That's what I'm saying, like, maybe, you know, I'm probably overthinking it. That's why I'm like, maybe there is no, like, stamina element to, like, keeping it activated all the time. Stuff like that is kind of where my mind goes. I just, because of that dialogue of him getting tired, I was like, oh, does having it activated all the time tie you out? But maybe it doesn't. He does quickly learn that he can't be too far away from Alma, because if he is, it'll it will kill Alma. Or like or at least Alma might will be like their synchronization then being in close proximity is what keeps Alma active. Now I don't know if it's like a Alma dies necessarily. It's just like you deactivate to some extent. Which I thought was interesting. Once again, making all the references today gives me Beelzebub vibes where like Oga couldn't be away from Baby Bell. Like a, he had to, could only be like a certain distance away from Baby Bell. Granted, in that case, it's like, well, if you're a certain distance away from Baby Bell, if you're unfamiliar with Be uh, Beelzebub, uh, Baby Bell would end up electro-shocking Oga with like lightning and thunder and screaming up a storm if um, Oga got too far away. It doesn't seem, it doesn't, it's not the same thing, but you know. But anyway, um, Hikaru and Alma have to run for their lives. I do love the first thing of just like, oh, like having to try and get away, and then like uh, Alma's like chasing after um, Hikaru, even grabbing one of his pants, and his pants are coming off, and it's like, oh, I have to run around in my underwear as I try to put my clothes back on while I'm getting chased by drones, which are pulling out buzz saws to cut me up, because it isn't just about Alma. It's like, well, retrieving Alma, but also killing the human associated with it, so there's that. And he was going to leave Alma behind until he found out Alma's circumstances of, oh, I have to be near you, so I can't just leave you behind. You kind of dragged me into this, but we're kind of in this together, so I have to stick it out, so... They're running not only eventually from the drones, but also Aki, who pops up out of nowhere, who knows exactly who Alma is, even though I, I, I forgot to talk about it. He doesn't know who he is. He doesn't remember anything. Doesn't seem like he knows what he is or who he is. He just knows, like, once she calls him Alma, he's like, yeah, that name, it, it does, you know, scratch something in the back of my mind. But initially, um, I also love that Home Dude and Aki had their uh, second fight, and that happened completely off screen because she was getting irritated because she was like, "Yo, people just keep getting in my way. This is my." I mean, she kind of bungled the first job, and now Hikaru is getting away from her. She was severely irritated and beat the ever living piss out of Home Dude. It's just it all happened off screen, and then she comes after Hikaru, and I was like, "Yo, just leave me behind." He's like, no, I can't leave you behind. He's like, see, you are a kind person, but I know I might not remember a lot, but I remember the one thing of I can't let kind people get hurt. So I was like, yeah, I'll stick behind because they're after me, not you. But Hikaru's thinking about everything and it's like, right, I just never step up. I never take that step forward. I never, I never stand my ground. I never want to do, I never, I always hesitate to do the right thing. So it's like, I, I want to do the right thing, but I always hesitate for whatever reason. And he decided to stick it through. So they run towards her and in this moment he ends up uh, Alma ends up transforming into a more bulkier form which obviously my brain immediately thinks of like I always never know how to properly pronounce the series name I always say like S cried it's like S dash the word cry dash E D um and it, it, the main protagonist had like a bulky arm thing similar so it just that's where my mind immediately goes um but yeah, in this particular case, he like morphs it into like this massive arm. Like it's a more, I guess, it's kind of a thing that maybe shifts depending on the battle circumstances and ends up laying Aki out and they're both able to just skedaddle. 
I guess another example to be thinking about is like, well, um, from D. Grayman, Alan's, um, Alan's innocence, how it manifests in the different forms it can take. So I guess that's kind of another comparison. I'll give him one fucking Devil May Cry and Nero would be another comparison. Granted, you know, I'm like I said, I'm pulling out all the references today. References today. I'm so sorry. I was curious how Aki and especially um, Hikaru were just going to live their everyday lives because I'm like, well, you're dealing with a conglomerate organization that like had video footage of you. Granted, they weren't able to identify you because you're a regular citizen, and I guess it takes time. By the end of the episode, they didn't know who Hikaru was, but they will eventually. But the organization Aki worked for, so it's like, right, we got to track it down. So I guess, I guess maybe both organizations found out at the same time maybe because i mean i could i guess aki saw his school uniform and knew where to go because it's like how does she know a meet because not once they were able to because the only reason why aki was able to find alma is because i think the word they use is derizzed is kind of like when they've been activated but it's like aki didn't know where to search until he kind of got activated the same thing for the others, the other side, they didn't know how to find him until then either. So I don't know if he gives off a signature why you need to be able to deactivate your arms or whether that's kind of a moot point and there is no means of tracking them necessarily. We also have this other story element where it seems like someone needs um, Alma because they're like, oh, someone took my trigger arm. And I'm like, is trigger arm the name for them in general? Or is that like a specific type of um, uh, Mekud? Like, for example, like almost from a special class to trigger arms? Or are they just... Because they, they they said the term trigger arms. And they've also just said the term arms by itself. So I'm wondering if the, it's just like, right, trigger arms is the full title. But sometimes it gets shorter to arms. Or is like trigger arms a very special um, grouping of arms or something like that? We'll got to wait to see. Like I said, we're getting thrown in the middle of things. It's just the first episode, so we're not going to get a lot of answers, just a lot of questions. But like I said, I was surprised just to see him just go to school like everything was normal the next day. And it's just kind of like, okay, he's trying to keep um, Alma hidden, which he's like, oh, you guys are going to school. Dedication, going to the same place every day. He's like, what's your favorite subject? He's like, I don't have one. And it's like him just being so inquisitive about his new friend and everything, so... But I love Aki getting transferred to the school. It's like, well, considering it seems like she's from a big organization, she's probably able to kind of make that work without too much issue. Because I did, I think I saw in the, the intro or something like that, she was in a school uniform. So I thought they naturally went to the same school. It's like, I mean, I don't even know if she was a student at all. She might not have even been in school. And now she is in school. Or maybe she had a normal life before she got mixed up with the arms and she had to put that aside. Who knows? She could just have a regular identity and then she just had that transferred over to this school. Don't know. Love the whole thing of her looking around the classroom. Sees um, Hiroki and the guy's like, hey, uh, Aki Mor uh, Moramase-san, like, sit beside me. And she picks up the desk, slams it beside him. And is just like, yo, hey, what's up? Good meeting you. And he's just oh, seriously? It's just, yeah, can't uh, catch a break. Like I said, she seems scary as hell. So it's going to be interesting to uh, see where the next episode takes us with all of this. Filling us in about the arms and what this is all about. Like I said, I've read a general premise about what the series is about. But uh, for the show to kind of explain it and give us more details and understanding how this whole thing works. Uh, the good guys, the bad guys, who they are and what everyone's after. Especially like... That one person, because I know the the head of the organization is like a genius or whatever. Like I said, he seems to be like a, because like he's named like I don't know. I don't think it's his organization. Like I said, I, I can't remember the group's name. I'm I'm gonna look it up real quickly. Okay, so it is Kagami. Uh, that whole corporation, like the head, the CEO is a Kagami. So I don't know if he started it or whether it's a family business he's passed down because he is like considered a genius. So he could have been the one that started it. I don't remember if they specified whether he did or not. But like I said, I, the other person, the person was like, oh, Alma, I need him. Like the one that seems to be sick without him. I don't, he looked like he had silverish hair or that kind of, tillish hair that the kagami dude had if he had oh god i'm probably like conflating so many different characters in my head at once i'm so sorry but i, I don't know if they're related or or what once again we don't know who a lot of these characters are we don't know where this lines in the sand are drawn on you know 
obviously it seems like Aki's group is supposed to be the good guys, but you never know. The script could always get flipped, and you're like, oh, they're actually not the good guys that you think they are. There's always a possibility, but from the get-go, it seems like they're from the good guys. Kagami and them are the bad guys. So it's definitely going to be interesting, like I said, to see uh, where all this takes us and get more clarity about everything. But really, that's all I wanted to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, love light to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.